Now let's move on to our next topic, which is pointers. You would have all heard or learned that pointers are a little complicated and difficult to understand. But that's not true. The fact is pointers are very, very similar to any other variable type that we've learned. We've learned about integers, floating point variables, characters, and so on. A pointer is another variable. Now an integer variable is used to store integer numbers. A floating point variable is used to hold a floating point number. Similarly, a pointer variable is used to hold an address. So a pointer variable is similar to any other variable. But the difference is that in a pointer variable, you're going to store the address of some other variable or a particular memory location. So that's all you need to remember that a pointer variable is going to store the address of some memory location. How do you declare a pointer? You specify the type of data the pointer is going to point to. So let's say my pointer is going to hold an address where we've stored an integer. Then I need an integer pointer. So I specify the type, which is int. Then I specify star, which means this is a pointer. And then finally specify the variable name. So int star p means p is a integer pointer, which means p is going to store the address of some memory location, which has an integer number. Before we go forward, let's look at a simple memory diagram as to what a pointer looks like in memory compared to any other variable. So let's draw memory again. That's our memory. Now let's say I declare an integer variable a. He's going to allocate 4 bytes of integers 4 and call it a. Now if I say a equal to 10, in this location he's going to store the number 10. So because this has some memory location, this memory location has an address. So let's say this has the address 2004. This is the starting address and because this takes up 4 bytes, it goes from 2004 to 2007. So you have the address 2004, 2005, 2006 and 2007 which belongs to the variable A. Similarly, let's say I have a character ch and I say ch equal to c. So it's going to allocate some space for ch in this because character is one byte. It's going to be one byte. It's going to call it ch and he's going to store the letter c. And this will have the address let's say 5000. So you know this is how variables work in memory. So what about pointers? So now let's say I declare an integer pointer as an int star ptr. So just like any other variable, he's going to allocate space in memory. Now how many bytes is he going to allocate for ptr? If it's a 32-bit machine, we've learned in the first chapter that a 32-bit machine means you just need 32 bits to hold the address. So which means even with the C program, you don't need more than 32 bits to hold the address because your memory or RAM cannot go beyond 4 GB. So we need only 32 bits or 4 bytes. So any pointer, no matter what kind of variable you're pointing to, is going to take up 4 bytes on a 32 bit machine. And if it's a 64 bit machine, it's going to take up 8 bytes. And this is because a pointer variable is going to store the address of some memory location and on a 32-bit machine the memory location cannot be greater than 4 GB so you don't need to store an address anything greater than 4 GB and for anything less than 4 GB all you need is 4 bytes so now PTR is going to take up 4 bytes in memory I'm going to call this PTR right now this is going to have some junk value because it's an automatic variable it's going to have some junk value so how do I assign some address to this. Just like any other variable, I can assign addresses directly. I can always say ptr equal to, I can give some address, let me say 4000. So it will store the value 4000 here. 
But then the address 4000 has no meaning to me because I have no idea why am I pointing to the address 4000. So most of the time you will not do this. So how would you assign some address? So let's say I want PTR because it's an integer pointer. It needs to point to an integer variable. So we have the integer variable A. So I'm going to make PTR point to A. In which case I say PTR equal to if I just say equal to A, A is what? A is 10. So he's going to land up storing 10 here, which is not what I want. I want to store the number 2004. I want to store the address of A over here. So how do you get the address of a variable? With the ampersand symbol. So ampersand and a variable name will give the address of that variable. So now PTR will have the value 2004. So you're going to store 2000. For you. So what is the point of the pointer variable? I can use the address as it is, I can print the address of variable but that's of no use to me. And there's no point of me modifying this because I'm not really modifying any data that I need. This is internal, the address is internal to the computer. I don't need to increment this by 4 or 1 byte or 2 bytes. If I make this 2005 or 2006 makes no difference to me right now. What I need is the variable A. That is what matters to me. So how do I access the variable A using the pointer? Because the pointer is pointing to the variable A, you can access the particular variable using the star symbol. So if I say star and a var pointer variable name, he basically dereferences the address stored in this memory location, goes to that address and then fetches whatever is stored over there. So when I say star PTR, he goes to the address 2004 and fetches 4 bytes from there and gets me the integer. In this case, the integer here is 10. So star PTR is nothing but 10. So now you've learned three concepts. PTR is a pointer variable. So the pointer variable can store an address of some memory location. To get the address of some variable, you use the ampersand symbol. So if I say ampersand A, it gets me the address of the variable A and I can store that in PTR. And finally, if I want to access what is stored in this memory location, I say star PTR. So star PTR would dereference PTR. What is PTR? PTR itself, just PTR alone is the address 2004. So if I say star PTR, it's like saying star 2004, which means go to the address 2004 and get me what's stored over there. So star PTR would fetch the value 10. So as you can see, pointer variables are exactly the same as any other variable. The integer variable A is storing the number 10, the character variable CH is storing the character C, and a pointer variable PTR is storing an address 2004. The only difference is using pointer variables, you could use a star symbol next to a pointer variable and dereference the address. So there's another thing I can do with the star symbol. Let's say I say star PTR equal to 20. So what does this mean? Go to the address 2004 and put the value 20 there. So it goes to address 2004, puts the value 20. So now if I try to, after this point, if I try to print A, he's going to print the value 20 because whatever A is pointing to, we have 20 there now. So we have now learned how to declare pointers and we've learned the use of the ampersand symbol and the star symbol. The ampersand unary operator is used to get the address of a particular variable and the unary operator star dereferences the address stored in the pointer to access the data the pointer points to. Not too complicated, right? It's simple. Now let's write a simple program to use pointers and see what exactly happens. Okay, so let's try a simple example. We have an int a equals 10. Then we'll have a pointer ptr, int star ptr. We can point it to the address of a, ampersand a. Now before I do anything with the pointer, let's print what's stored in the pointer itself. So printf ptr. Now generally it's a good practice to print addresses in hexadecimal format. I can of course print a 
pointer or an address as a percentage t because it's just a number right but just so that the person who's looking at it knows it's an address we generally print addresses as hexadecimal format so i'm going to use percentage x shin and say ptr so as you can see i'm just using the variable name here so the variable name alone means get the contents of that particular variable if i'd used the variable name here as a you would have printed 10 in hexadecimal format similarly i'm just printing ptr which means whatever is being stored in the address location ptr should be printed in hexadecimal format and in ptr we're storing the address of a so right now he should print the address of a let's try that no errors or warnings and there you go he prints 28ff44 so that is the address of a now Let's see what happens when we dereference the address. So I say printf star ptr. And we print it as a decimal. And we say star ptr. So here we're trying to dereference the address. So we go to the particular address ptr is pointing to and then print that value. So in this case, he should print 10. Run. And there he prints 10. Now let's modify star PTR and we increment it by let's say 20. So star PTR plus equal to 20 which means 10 plus 20 is 30. Now instead of printing star PTR we're going to print the variable A. So the variable a should also have the value 30. There you go, a is 30. So whether I increment a by 20 or I incremented star ptr by 20 is the same because star ptr finally goes to the memory location where a is and modifies that value. So similarly, if you want to have a character pointer, you can always have char star cptr but we don't have a character variable to point to so let's have a character variable too so char ch equal to c so now i can say equal to address of ch so this will behave exactly the same as ptr there's nothing new here but let's see the size of CPTR and PTR. We know that A is going to have a size of about 4 bytes. CH would be 1 byte. And I mentioned that both PTR and CPTR, no matter what type of pointer it is, all pointers would take up 4 bytes. All pointers would take up 4 bytes on a 32-bit machine and 8 bytes on a 64-bit machine. Let's see what we get as the result here. So I would say printf. size of int ptr percentage d slash n size of ptr then we say print f size of cat ptr percentage d slash n size of cptr Let's run this. And there, size of int ptr is 4, size of char ptr is also 4. So because it's a 32 bit machine, we get both of them as 4 bytes. Another thing you should notice is just like any other variable, you generally mention it as data type and then variable name. So similarly, here too, ptr is a variable name. And the data type is int star, which means the variable ptr is an integer pointer. Similarly here, cptr is your variable name and your data type is cast star because cptr is a character pointer.